Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach parenting and good communication all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're talking about handling verbal abuse from children. Verbal abuse from children is actually an increasing problem. It's on the rise. Why is that? In this video, we're going to talk about why verbal abuse is increasing in families from children, and then we're going to talk about what we can do about it. Society has this pendulum that swings, this communication pendulum that seems to go from passive to aggressive, passive to aggressive. Now, for children, I would say historically, more often than not, they're pushed toward the passive side and the parents take the aggressive side in the relationship. Not that anyone should be passive or aggressive. The ideal is that parents and children are both assertive and they know how to communicate together. We'll be talking more about how to do that later on in this video and I have tons of videos on this channel about that assertive type of communication. But why is it when we've historically had this parents are a little bit more dominant, more aggressive, children are a little bit more passive. Why right now are we having this switch where now the parents are very passive and they're trying to appease the child all of the time and, they, and the child is now playing dictator over here in the relationships and in the family, they're being aggressive and nobody's reining them in, or at least they're waiting until large mistakes have been made in the relationship, damage has occurred before they're actually reining them in. Why is that happening? Well, socially, there are so many things that are occurring. Now, one thing that I think we could probably easily pinpoint is entitlement. So we have bred a society of entitlement and excuse making, okay? So we have taught the children that they need to look for their excuse. Parents and adults have taught this by making excuses themselves. When children and parents are looking for excuses, then what happens is the child sees that as the skill. That's the go-to. Oh, well, somebody else did this, and so I am entitled not to take personal responsibility for this. And so then that leads to more and more feelings of entitlement and like somebody else needs to take care of the problem and they don't have to take personal responsibility. Taking personal responsibility is something that is learned over time. This leads me to another reason that children are struggling and that is because of increased coddling. Now it's the coddling that's also leading to the entitlement, but the coddling or babying of the child, not having them take on a lot of adult responsibilities like learning to work and provide some things for themselves like buy things for themselves, earn money, those types of things. Because parents are just doing it all for the children and just requiring that the children just do schoolwork. And they're saying schoolwork is enough work. That's hard enough. They just need to get into that good college and, and that's good enough. They don't have to learn these adult skills is actually disabling the child so that the child does not have any experience with taking personal responsibility with relationships with just day-to-day -day tasks and work in their life. So we have to be very careful. I've got a lot of videos on work, okay, on this channel, on money management, work, and teaching children the skills that they need to govern themselves some of these adult skills. So be sure to look those things up after this video because you'll get a lot more information there. Another issue that we have is just disrespect. We are breeding disrespect. The word respect actually means to reverence, to regard somebody. And if you think about reverencing someone, that would mean that you honor their name. You don't talk bad about them to other people. You would value them even if you don't agree with them. You would listen to them. 
You wouldn't try to shut them down. You wouldn't get overly emotional about what they're saying. You would listen. You would care. You would stay open-minded. So this brings me to another thing, close-mindedness. Our culture is breeding close-mindedness. We have this idea in our culture that if you're not with me, you're against me. And so this, we're breaking everybody into groups. Well, when we do that outside of the family, culturally, ideologically, Obviously, we are going to be doing that within the family too. It becomes a social way to view our relationships and society, and it's a very toxic social way to view. It's a bad lens to look through. What group are they in? That's a bad lens to look through. What do they believe versus what do I believe? If they don't believe the same as me, they're out of touch, they're archaic. That's taboo, that's old fashioned, that's, you know, fill in the blank, okay? So there is this distance that's forming between parents and children or adults and children because children are not being required to learn what respect is, how to respect. We teach them how to respect themselves but we don't teach them very well how to respect other people. Now, one thing that we are teaching is how to bow down or kowtow to another person's emotions. So how does this play in? Well, if everything is about how somebody feels and, and if we have to bend, if, if someone is feeling emotional and then we have to change because they're feeling emotional and that's the only reason that we change, then guess what we're teaching our children? to be emotional. We're training them. If they want to be heard, that they have to be emotional. So we've got, if you're not with us, you're against us. So battle mentality, and then inflating the value of emotions, and boom, we've got the recipe for argumentative children. Children who are pushing back against parental authority, children who are fighting, even the little simple things, even the parent trying to help the child, trying to understand the child. They're putting up walls, they're fighting, they're becoming combative. This combativeness leads to verbal abuse. So what can we do if we feel like we're being verbally abused by our children? Well, we've got to teach them new skills. We've got to teach them a way to communicate that actually works to be understood, that doesn't have to get into emotion emotional entitlement and battle mentality and that verbal abuse. If you react emotionally to them reacting emotionally, we are going to have a power struggle that just keeps going back and forth and back and forth all the time. That's not the way to handle it. Sure, they should understand maybe how people feel sometimes, but really that's beside the point. When a person gets to a place where they are verbally assaulting other people, they are yelling, they are dominating, they are taking over other people's roles and people feel like they are in bondage to another person, we've got to bring everything back into view. And the first thing we do is we say, that's a behavior, not a person. We say that to ourselves, okay, in our own heads. That's a behavior, not a person. And so I am going to treat the behavior and love the person. And that's how we have to do this. So what do we do to treat the behavior? Well, the first thing that we need to do within our own heads is make sure that we are very clear about the roles. Who are we to each other? What is parent, right? What does parental authority mean? Does that mean we dominate everything? Not necessarily, but there are certain things that the child relies upon us for, and sometimes we are removing those things when we're being passive to that aggressiveness that the child is displaying. I've written 11 books, and three of them would be very helpful to you in teaching your children how to not verbally abuse you. So this book, Popular Parenting Methods, is really great for helping you recognize how to not get stuck in a power struggle with your children, how to improve that assertive type of communication that you need. Then this book here, I was just mentioning roles, remember? This book, Roles, The Secret to Family, Business, and Social Success, 
is actually a book that will help you identify what your roles are to each other. And then finally, this book, it is the biggest, but this is kind of the key piece to everything I teach, Parenting a House United. This book actually teaches you all of the skills that you need to govern yourself and to help your children learn to govern themselves. This will increase respect, improve your family relationships, increase open communication and open-mindedness as well. This should be a book that makes everybody happy even though at first, if you have a strong-willed, aggressive, maybe even abusive child, at first they'll be like, no, I don't want any of that. So don't be thrown off by that. Just get this and get going. There's a course that also teaches all these things plus tax. So I've got lots of resources there, but let me just share with you a few key resources out of this book that you will definitely want to know. And, and I have to just give you the caveat, this isn't gonna be the everything because I'll give you another video at the end of the video that you can go to that will give you even more of these skills. But in order to teach all of the things about self-government, it does actually take me in a parenting mastery training, which are these three-day trainings that I do, three whole days with parents to teach them all of the skills and how to troubleshoot all of the things and get the relationships back on track. So I'm gonna give you some little nuggets right here that I hope that you can use and that I hope you'll go and you'll learn more. Key things that you can do. There are four basic skills of self-government. The four basic skills are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences and disagreeing appropriately. These four basic skills are required for a person to be fully self-governed. But I just want to talk about some of the key pieces in these skills today. So each of these skills has a skill set, which means there are steps to the skills. So for instance, to accept a no answer, there are four steps. You look at the person, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say okay, or you ask to disagree appropriately, and then you drop the subject. So teaching your child each of these steps to that skill makes a big difference. What does it mean to look at the person? Why are we doing that? Well, because that ex establishes the roles. It establishes respect and it says, I'm ready to be taught. It helps a child who is a learner be ready to learn from the teacher who is the parent. And it also helps them open up. When a child won't look at you, that is a sign that they're closed. They're not listening. Nothing's gonna go through during that time. You've gotta get that communication established again and the eye-to-eye -eye contact is the best because your eyes are the windows to your soul. So what about some of these other steps? What about keeping a calm face, voice, and body? Does your child understand what calm really is? And do they understand the power of calm? I actually have a whole class on that on my website, teachingselfgovernment.com, all about calmness called the power of calm. And actually below this video in the description, there's actually a link to a little mini course I have also about calmness. It's called the Calm Parenting Toolkit. You can click on the link in the description below this to that toolkit. You can get that for free right now. So do they understand calmness? Do you understand calmness? Have you shared that with your children? That's vital information. You can't correct something that has not been taught. So you've got to pre-teach them ahead of time. What is calmness? What is not calm? And then what do we do to correct that? Now that's where we get into more things from this book that you'll need how to do the corrections and stuff like that. Those are going to come in and they're going to make a big difference in helping your child. So then there's dropping the subject. Do you know how powerful it is to be able to drop a subject? If you can look at a circumstance or a person you didn't agree with, maybe you didn't win the race or you couldn't find the object or the person just told you no and you can say, I can accept that and I'm going to not think about it anymore. That is a power move. That is a conscious decision to move forward and not get stuck in the past. When a child is getting really aggressive and abusive, what they are doing is they are continually cycling backward, not forward. They want you 
to understand something or to do something that they didn't see that happened before. They have this thought process, they have something in them that is not resolved from the past that they keep coming back to and that's why they get abuses. And by the way, for parents, it's the same for you. If you can't let go of what your child did, then you're gonna have the same problem, you'll get stuck. Once you correct it, you move on. You drop the subject. You don't make it an issue day after day after day. That's important. Now there is another skill. It's a really great skill. It's in this book and it's in my teaching self-government course, parenting course. We call that the TSG parenting course. Um, and that is disagreeing appropriately. If they need to tell you something, teach them how to do it. There is a skill called disagreeing appropriately and I teach it in other videos as well as in the materials on my website where there's seven steps that the child can go through where they can look at you, keep a calm face, voice, and body. They can seek to understand your point of view, share their point of view, listen to what you have to say, say okay, drop the subject. They can learn how to communicate with you in a way that will help them be understood but also maintain the roles and not cross over that line into getting too emotionally trapped and starting to abuse that relationship. I've given you a ton of resources. I've mentioned so many in this video, but don't forget that Calm Parenting Toolkit that you can get in the description below here because that's really gonna help you. If you don't have calmness, you're not gonna be able to help them stop abusing you. That's just the truth of it. And there are many more skills. I've shared two today out of like nine that are essential, okay? There's the four basics, but then there's also five that the parents need to help the child live those four basics as well, as well as other things to just help with your connection and your relationships. So be sure to go to the Calm Parenting Toolkit that's listed below. It says teachselfgov.com slash toolkit, and I'll see you there.